What's up, guys? This is Alex from Rex Trades back to you with another weekly trade ideas list. Hope everybody had a wonderful weekend. Um, we had a pretty amazing week last week. I mean, just crazy volatility in the markets, We're able to um, catch some downside with puts and uh, take profit on that. And also, we had a huge rally on Friday, which honestly I didn't even participate in. But that doesn't mean we can't participate in it this week. So let's go ahead and get into our first setup here. We're looking at FDX. And I really like FDX here because you do have a back test of resistance. We're trying to make new support here. So you have your main resistance, making a base, and making support. Um, and this is a nice little candle. So ideally, we're going to want to see it run up to this trend line here. We'll probably find resistance about there. And if you go down to the four hour, I mean, same thing. So be looking for about that level to hit. You know, it's not a huge price target or anything, but we need to see how it will react to the trend line, you know, before saying it's going to go any higher. So that's our first setup. Just really nice uh, back test of the break here. If you don't know, this is just a classic break and retest strategy. So you got your breakout, comes back test, makes a base off old resistance, and that's your setup. So it's just a nice little easy one. Um, stop loss obviously be under 184.39, so that, you know, it would be slightly under this. If you really want to go under this low, this candle here, that would work too. Next, we're going into WMT, so this is Walmart. Um, I really like this one. It's holding the bottom of demand very well. Made a nice base off the 200 EMA here. Oh, and by the way, we are looking at calls on FTX. So we're looking for upside, obviously. WMT, we're also looking for calls. I forgot to mention that. So we're looking at calls on this, holding the bottom of demand, holding a really nice base. Um, finally, was able to pop back over the 200 EMA after having you know a one-day break under. It's probably spooked a a lot of people to be honest once the stock loses, loses your daily 200 that's a really good reason to start selling um but it was a fake out because it did hold the bottom of demand so it looks good um ideally though i want to see a reclaim over this 140 uh, which comes from this little base right here so you want to see it get over 140 head back up into the upper trend line we'll probably find resistance about there um and you also have your daily 50 ema right here so you will need to keep it Keep an eye on that as well so you can use that as a price target you don't have to just use the trend line so yeah looking at cause on that i just think it looks really nice minus the fact that it is forming a descending triangle which is a bearish pattern your stop loss would be under 138.28 and that would be um your max risk because if it did break under you know the demands on low there's a good chance it could flush under you know try to make a base off you know old support make new resistance and flush to the downside and you can see this little volume pocket here on the volume profile this is kind of like looking a little gappy. So if there's not much holding up here, I mean, obviously it can fill up this area pretty quick and flush. So that's why you'd want it to hold this general high volume area, which is also your demand zone. So yeah, looking at calls on that. So FDX looking at calls, WMT also looking at calls. Next, we're going into Walgreens. So it's the ticker symbol WBA, which is also holding a drop base rally demand zone. It starts off with a selling. So it's got a drop, creates a base, rally to the upside and that would be a drop base rally demand zone. So I really like these because they are counter trend um, and you are buying at lows. So you do kind of get a discount um, on premiums, assuming that you snipe the right entry. Um, one thing you will want to see WBA do here, you can see I, I already added an alert. You just right click, uh, add alert, and then you know we could put breakout and wait for that to hit. So you can see it's kind of like a wedge. Um, I wouldn't say it's like the cleanest wedge or anything because it's kind of you know wide, but it is holding this uptrend line. Uh, which is pretty important so you got test one test two came down close to test three i, I would still count it um also holding your drop base rally demand which comes from this base candle and next we're going to see a break out of this uptrend line so that's two retail you know two retail trades uh to keep an eye on w wmt and wba we do have microsoft earnings this week and we have a bunch of others so look we got um, a bunch of big oil names so you got slb uh, you got j and j verizon microsoft ibm uh, Tesla, Tesla will be a huge one. So, you, I mean, you just got crazy earnings this week. You got MasterCard, Visa, CVX, another big oil, um, American Express. So, I mean, you could just see this this week can be a, a pretty big market mover, assuming that these stocks do go ahead and have huge moves from earnings. So, we're gonna have to be careful with that. Another thing that we do have coming is the PCE, which is a little bit different than CPI. This is the Fed's number one preferred indicator and they do prefer it over CPI. And if you go to the St. Louis Fed website, um, they also claim that as well. So it's just something to keep an eye out. Next, we're gonna go into Billy. So the ticker symbol B-I-L-I is a Chinese ticker. Um, you can see it's breaking the uptrend here, kind of like a rising wedge. You got test one, test two, test three, breaking down the fourth, 
and uh, you got your daily 200 EMA here. Ideally, we're gonna see get under the 200 EMA and come back down to supports. Your next supports would be 22.28 and also 24.88. And that comes from this base and it comes from this base. So Billy, we're gonna see it go ahead and fall down from here. I will be looking at puts on this is it to break the uptrend line so that you know does confirm our bear bias next we're going into baba so i really like this one uh for puts again so this is another chinese ticker obviously the thing where this differs from billy is that baba does have earnings coming up so you know they they could have different movement you can see baba has had a pretty pretty strong rally compared to billy where it's starting to sell off and if you go back to billy here you can see that um blackrock did trim their position trim their position to only 4.96 percent according to their Hong Kong exchange filing. So I thought that was interesting, but the thing with uh, BABA here is pulling into a one week supply and what kind of supply is this? This is a rally base drop supply zone. So it just creates a rally, makes the base, super strong selling to the downside, and now it's finally testing this general area. So we're gonna be looking for resistance about here. Could get through supply, test the top of the area, find resistance about there. But um, this general area is what you're gonna be looking for, resistance. So if you do get you know resistance right away on cash open Monday, you do, you do have a good case for taking an entry there just because you know you are in the supply and it could curl down and head back down to you know this little daily demand candle right here. So it'd probably be about 110 or something. Ideally, I'm gonna be looking at day trades on this um, just because earnings is coming up, Billy. You know, maybe you could look at a swing trade because, you know, they don't have earnings coming up. So you wouldn't really be like gambling um, on an earnings report. They're, they're both kind of different, but um, looking at puts on both and they are both Chinese companies. Next, we're going to go into the SPY. So last week, so last week we were looking at this downtrend line from all time highs to current. And you can see um, we we're looking for resistance either there or we're looking for a breakout. So we did go ahead and get the resistance um, for a few days. You can see uh, Tuesday found a small resistance, didn't really have a big red day, but the next day we did sell off about you know 1.5%. And then even fo had follow through with another about 1% move down, but it only closed down 0.73%. So, I mean, this move from the trend line did produce negative 3.21% move from that high down to that low. So it was about a 3% sell off just in two days, which is, I mean, pretty crazy. I mean, we did have the 200 EMA in the way on the daily. We also had the downtrend line in the way. So we're looking for resistance on that, obviously, or breakout, but it did confirm the resistance. So, I mean, it gave a really good entry for puts. I was already in them from last week. So I just, you know, I had a little drawdown, maybe minus 17% or something on the contracts, but it did um, end up following through to the downside. And I think it paid about, you know, 50% or something. It made like $400 a pop, so. Really nice. This week, I don't have any new swing trade positions yet. So I'm going to be looking carefully and um, hopefully find something new. But yeah, so for SPY here, um, pretty much the same as last week. You know, we're only a little bit down further from where we were when we covered this last week. So obviously, you know, it's forming that kind of like a wedge. You got the uptrend line here that's holding and you also have the downtrend line that hasn't broke out of yet. You know, and what does that set you up for? Sets you up for chop. We're going to see it do something. It could either break that way or break that way. Uh, that's how symmetrical wedges work. They are bilateral, so you don't really know until you get the confirmed breakout. But um, I mean, you are trading under your daily 200, but then you have this massive bullish candle from Friday. <laughs> I mean, that's pretty much indicating that algos came through um, and they wanted to buy and they chased it higher. So, uh, but the main resistance to break this week, along with the downtrend line for bulls, obviously is just 400 flat or 423, which is that high. And then also that would take you up to 41049 which is the same level we covered last week. If it was able to break out, it could get up to 410.49. So same thing as last week, but you are in this wedge. Be careful of the range, maybe wait for a breakout. All right, and QQQ, so pretty similar. Um, I mean, the SPY, it's running up into the downtrend line. You do want to see it either break out or reject here. Uh, you might have a couple more, couple more points before it actually taps the line. You can see the volume profile here. Uh, this is the point of control. Uh, we haven't cleared it yet, so that I mean that could be setting up for sales for all we know. So we do want it to get over the point of control, which is this line. This is the highest volume pocket, and you can see if it gets over that, there's a little bit less of volume over here, and it could give you free space up to 296. So you really want to see it get over the point of control as well as you know break out of the downtrend line. You don't really have an uptrend line holding you up or anything. Uh, the uptrend line originally was this. You can see it broke down made a double bottom and was able to reclaim. So, I mean, I guess you could keep that there. Although once, you know, it breaks through, I kind of, I kind of just get rid of the line cause it, you know, it could be invalid. I mean, I don't think our algorithms really care 
you know, the, the, if they see it reclaimed, they're going to buy. If they, you know, see it go back down, they're going to, you know, regardless if it's chopping through, through it or not. So uh, that's just one thing to keep in mind. I guess it's more like an OCD thing for me. You know, it does kind of like invalidate my analysis a little bit if it does, you know, break through. You know, you're going, you're going to want to be looking for something fresh and new after that, looking for a new trend to form rather than an old one that's been broken through. So, yeah, QQQ, um, same thing. You just want to see it either reject at the downtrend line or you're going to want to see it break out and get up to 296.88. So no setup at the moment. Uh, your one clear line of resistance that does need to get over is 284.69 which is this uh, this little high from the sell-off. And once that gets over, I mean, that could give you a pretty big move. So, I mean, you could even go down to the one hour, comes from this right here. So that 284 definitely needs to get broken over. Cause I mean, just look at this crazy sell imbalance just from, you know, rejecting off that area. Next, we're going into the IWM. So last week we wanted to see it pull up into supply. So you could look at puts. If it pulled up into supply, it was able to do that. So this was its one, that's one rejection. That's two, three, this was its fourth rejection. And that just gave you a crazy move to the downside along, you know, with the other indexes. And you can see how, just how perfect the supply was. Uh, so hopefully, I mean, if, if you keep track of the IWM, you, you mark that supply zone and, you know, took puts when it got there. Cause that was a really nice trade. Now it's kind of like, it's almost like forming an interesting uh, cup and handle or inverse head and shoulders or something. I mean, you, you can just see it right now. Uh, if it was able to do that, that'd be pretty bullish, but obviously it would have to get over the supply. So that's your supply. It would have to get over that, you know, to validate any trend like that so but i mean it's interesting setup it's just it's not confirmed yet so you don't really know so if i wm this week obviously um you're just going to see it get over the 189 86 which is also the supply um i can even re-add the supply here so yeah it needs to get over that 189 86 and uh that could give you some good bullish momentum if it was able to get over that otherwise i'm feeling more bearish neutral here until it gets over that it does have if you look at this candle i mean from friday just crazy bullish you know that does give you a good case for a small run-up to this and that would be good for like a day trade on calls but that's about as far as i can put you for now um i need to see that supply get taken out maybe even form more of the cup and handle giving you more of a clear signal for bulls but otherwise i mean you could keep you know scalping puts of supply maybe look at a swing trade or something but yeah i mean just wait for the pattern to form wait for the supply to get taken out also if you wanted to take puts you know wait for supply to tap so you, you do want to wait for the supply and see what it does there first. Otherwise, you know, you do have a small range of two supply that you can maybe trade. Like I said earlier, just that little, you know, free space in that sell imbalance area back up to supply. Next, we're going into the VIX. So the VIX last week had a, you know, pretty interesting week per usual. Um, it's really just been chopping in this range, but uh, it hasn't been the greatest indicator for volatility lately, to be honest. It really just depends. Like some days it'll, you know, it'll really help you kind of put things into perspective and you know if it's selling off pretty hard you know usually you're going to see a rally you know just like friday sold off three percent we saw you know about a 1.5 percent move to the upside on the spy yeah i mean we really need to see it getting out of this downtrend line so you get this short-term downtrend line here uh if you're bearish you do want to see it get back over that that would maybe give it you know a good little hint of volatility is coming back and it could head back up for you know a mean regression back to the 2022 to 2023 average close otherwise we're going to want to see it make a base and you know, make support off 20s holding over 20s again otherwise you know it could go lower so your main level right now to get under if you're you know bullish on stocks you do want to see it get back under the the 18 dollar low here and then you do have support you know here at 1895 which comes from this base you know that does bring you down to 1634 which comes from over here and that's what makes that little you know that free space i'll even draw it so you can see it this little free space it can take you down to the 1634 which is the previous low but otherwise just make sure um if you are you know bearish on stocks you do want to see it breaking out of this and reclaiming 20. you know if you're bullish you do want to see it getting under the 18 mark uh really to just simplify what i was explaining and then i can also show you the data here so this is the 2022 to 2023 average close uh, last week it was at 25.52 after this uh these four trading days it did drop it down to 25.42 and you can see that or i'm sorry 25.44 so it dropped down from 25.52 to 25.44 so volatility is trending lower the moving average is going lower the average close is going lower so volatility is very cheap right now which means options are pretty cheap next we're going to go into the dxy this is the dollar index so it actually sold off a little bit more um but it, it is holding that same like you know that base that we covered last week at 101.29 uh so we do want to see it you know make a move from here 
um, if you do want to see, you know, more movement in the market. If you're bullish on stocks, you definitely want the dollar to get under this. If you're bearish, you do want to see it holding up here, making a base and heading back up to, you know, the you know, the 102s, 103s. But otherwise, I still have this uh, main COVID peak from 2020 on watch here. I just think this is a huge level and I think it's really big that we're, you know, finally under it. And it didn't, it barely even held up. Like once we got there, it maybe lasted a couple days, tried to make a base and then it just fell right through. Like it didn't even matter. But I think this level is huge because this is when, you know, the dollar peaked in 2020 at its highest level before selling off. So ideally, you know, same thing as last week, you just, you want to see it making a, you know, a monthly base. So by the end of January, you do want to see it holding over this. Um, if the monthly candle closes under, I mean, that'd be pretty good for stocks, I think, short term, maybe even on a long term basis. For a long term basis, obviously, that depends on the Fed and their monetary policy, how much more they're going to keep raising, how long are they going to keep uh, interest rates up, etc. And if you guys didn't know, the Federal Reserve does have a meeting February 1st, so it's coming up pretty soon. And, you know, with all these earnings coming up, like we just went over, you know, you got you know, Microsoft, you know, Tesla, all those big ones following up into the Federal Reserve meeting. This could be a big, pretty big couple of weeks for the stock market. So just make sure you trade safe. I'll go over the setups one more time. So FDX, we're looking at calls. WNT, we're looking at calls. WBA, looking at calls. Billy and Baba, two Chinese names, looking at puts because they're, you know, are getting into overbought conditions. Um, the indexes, I mean, you can see that, you know, we're waiting for the breakout. QQQ, we're waiting for the breakout or rejection for both IWM waiting to get over that supply. VIX, you want to see uh, under 18 or you want to see it back over 20. DXY, you do want to see over 102.99, which is the COVID peak. Uh, if you're, you know, bearish on stocks, you do want to see it reclaiming that. Also, if you're bullish, you do want it to get under that 101.29, which is this base, and that would be good for the stock bulls. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I love you guys. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe to our Xtrays YouTube channel. I'm going to go ahead and end this and you know, get it uploaded and edited and chopped up. So love you guys. Tap into the next one.